Hello and welcome to the seventh section of our full stack Kotlin application course. In this section we will be finally escaping the JVM world and jumping into the front end side of our application. We will be setting up Kotlin front end module and seeing how we can define our build processes around Kotlin JS. We will be creating a module for our front end artifacts. We'll set up a build process using Cradle Kotlin DSL again. And then we can finally start creating our first front end application in this case, naturally being a hello world. After that, we'll take a look at Kotlin and JavaScript interoperability and how we can converse between the two languages. And finally, we'll set up Webpack and start using NPM to pull in our dependencies as well as seeing if we can find a good way to set up Webpack to make our development workflow easier. In this video, we'll be setting up Kotlin to JS Cradle plugin and we'll be doing that using Cradle Kotlin DSL. We'll create a new front-end module within our existing application. We'll set up dependencies for Kotlin front-end build. And finally, we'll configure Kotlin to JS plugin. Previously, we had a backend module in here that contained sub modules within itself. I have also created a front end folder into the application that contains the same source main Kotlin folder structure that comes from Cradle conventions or Maven conventions. And now we can finally add that front end folder into the application as itself as a module. We'll jump into settings.cradle file and create a new line in here containing words include and front end. As we have done that, we can see that a blue tick appeared next to our front end folder name. So IntelliJ has finally recognized this module to be a proper Cradle module. To make that Cradle module work for us nicely, we'll create a few new files in here. The first one, of course, being build.cradle.kts and the second one being cradle.properties. The first file we'll touch is cradle.properties. In here, we'll define our Kotlin version. We will be using for now Kotlin version 114-3. And now that we have that set up, we can jump into our build.cradle.kts file. First bits and pieces that we need to add into the file is of course our build script. This contains more or less the same definitions as our backend build. So we'll add a Kotlin Cradle plugin into the build script and we'll define repositories to be j center in this time. Note that we don't need Spring dependencies anymore because we are working on the front-end world completely and most of the dependencies that we are pulling in come from NPM package manager instead. Now that we have our build script set up, we can apply our first plugin. This plugin is Kotlin to JS and we'll soon see how we can actually do some options with that plugin. Our build file itself, we also need the JCenter repo. And finally, we'll set up a few dependencies, or in this case, one single dependency in here. That dependency, of course, being our Kotlin standard library, JavaScript standard library. Note that we are not using the compile function we are using the string version of that. That is because Kotlin to JS plugin is not quite there yet. And it uh, give us the option to use the compile function. But all the same, we can use the Kotlin function and pull in our standard library JS. Now that we have all the dependencies, repos and plugins set up, we can start modifying our Kotlin to JS plugin. So we'll create a new value in here called compile Kotlin to JS and we'll get that from tasks and bind that into a variable. So the type of this task of course is Kotlin to JS compile and that comes from the Kotlin plugin. So 
we have our value defined, the next step for us is to define some options within that value. We have a lambda called Kotlin options or a function that takes in Kotlin JS options extension function. So a lambda with a receiver. And within here, we can finally start creating our first definitions of our Kotlin builds. The first option we put on is source maps. That way we can map our Kotlin code in front end build when using dev tools with the browser. We'll also create a meta info file with this build and we'll add a few compiler arguments. So we'll add free compiler args setting and that contains a list of strings. In our case, the compiler argument that we are enabling is a coroutines. Now that we have the first settings done, we can finally start creating our output file. Our output file in this case will be the index.js that is generated by Kotlin and the output file location is within our project build directory. The path of that and a subdirectory called JS. Within that file, of course, we'll create our index.js file. Now that we have all of those ready, the last few bits are defining our main as well as our module. We'll use common JS modules in this case. If we jump into our Cradle build and see we have tasks folder ready for us, we can refresh our Cradle build and that should be giving us a build task as well. Now, if we run our build, we'll see that everything seems to be successful. The artifact has been created for us. And if we jump into our uh, front end folder, we can see that a build folder has been generated in here. There is a problem though, because within this build folder, we only have a jar file, even though we are expecting a JavaScript file and manifest MF file as well. That seems that we are still creating a artifact working in the JVM world. 